Um, that ain't right. All right. What do we have here? We have HD AI auto tracking conference camera. User manual here. Foam here. Box number one. Okay. Remote and a cable. This cable happens to be a USB, love it when I get a USB 3.0 cable. Yes, don't have many of these, so I love it when I get them. USB on that side, USB 3.0 connection, and uh, that one, remote. Put it in the comments, do you think there is a set of batteries in this remote? One, two, three, ah, uh, no batteries. So we'll need some batteries. Okay, this is a little heavy, so what do we have in here? So screw mounts, power, and wall mount. So we have a wall mounting bracket. Now we won't be wall mounting this. We're actually putting this on a tripod. We'll set it up on our shelving unit on the top. So we got all of that. And then finally we have the camera. Ooh, nice shiny black foam down there. Got the protective cover on it. Nice shiny black. Let's see if our fingerprints show up on it. Yeah, we'll definitely have to uh, wipe it down. So fingerprints will show on it now. You're not gonna be touching this all the time, so you'll be fine. Uh, we have our thread adapter under the bottom, which is gonna be perfect for mounting this on a tripod. Love this, username, password, and IP address on the bottom of it. And then we also have our configuration dial here to change between 1080p and multiple frame rates, 720p, multiple frame rates, SDI and HDMI. So we need something a little small, put in there, turn it. I'm gonna log in through the software and change it because I don't mess with it here. But having the IP address on this is perfect so you don't have to actually find it in the boot up sequence. Uh, on the back of this, we have DC power. We have the RS-485 port. We have RS-232 in, RS-232 out. So we can daisy chain these to multiple PTZ cameras using serial connection. We can use USB and go directly into our computer. We have HDMI, which we can use for our video switcher. We have SDI connection as well. We have a line in, we have a line out, and we have RJ45 to put this on the network. So we have everything that I like to have in a PTZ camera when it comes to connections. All right, so now we have to hijack some batteries out of our confidence monitor TV remote and place it inside of the PTZ camera remote. Good to go. Now we're not gonna be using the power adapter that came with it because we're gonna be using PoE power. So this is plugged into my network switch, plug it into the back of the camera, link light is showing, and this should go through the boot up sequence here, which it is. trying to go further down than what it can actually go down. All right, let's try that again.
it's not supposed to do that, I don't think. sequence was a little odd a little odd all right let's bring let's check our IP address again here so we have our IP address here on the bottom I need to get on the network of the of this camera and then we will bring it into our production here all right, we'll go into our network we are currently on our Wi-Fi and on our main network. We are going to switch our network here. Go to manual configuration. 192, 168, I think it's on the zero, third octet, yep, and we will go one below it, okay. All right, so now we'll bring up a new browser. And we are connected to it and the pass password and username, our default admin admin. And let's take off the cover of the camera here. Hey, there we are. Whew, getting focused there. All right. So let's change our IP address. So let's go into network settings. We want to, because it's gonna be on our, our network, we can automatically do it. But because I also know th that my naming schema for my network and my PTZs, I'm going to actually put in a dedicated IP address for this. Now, currently, I don't have a camera on .113. I actually recently sold that camera. So if you're interested in any of the gear that I use here and that I actually resell or gear that I just review and then resell, there's gonna be a link in the video description and you can actually purchase my gear that I don't get the chance to use it all the time. So 113 is open and we have our default gateway set up and make sure we change this as well. We'll hit save. Our camera has to reboot. So we'll see if it does a funky reboot again. make sure that this goes all the way through here and then we'll get our laptop back on our correct network here okay so that is 5013 so let's get back our computer on our network so we'll go to details here DHCP All right, let's see, make sure we're back on our network. We're still looking for our IP address to obtain here, okay. Got our IP address, and let's see, details here. Okay, so we are back on our internal network, which is good. Let's reconnect to 
this camera. And we are got it on our internal network, so that is good. So admin, admin. And we are back with it on our internal network, so good to go. So let me go ahead and get this actually mounted on a tripod here. We're going to actually put it on this tripod using the thread adapter under the bottom here. And good to go. And we have our remote control here, so we can all right, so we are got a pretty good picture there. And I also want to bring it into our production. So right now it is just NDI connected, me looking through the software, but in our produ production, uh, we see that we have camera three available, camera four, and camera six. So I have those open slots. So I'm gonna grab my HDMI cable that I had on the previous camera that was in that location. And plug it in and we'll see that camera three will now show up in our multi view so now we have camera three in our multi view and we are looking good here and then also on my super joy controller I believe I had this already programmed with the last camera because I'm using the exact same IP schema we should just be able to zoom in and zoom out here with the joystick so everything is already configured this is one of the benefits of just using this joystick and even just looking at the the camera right now I see my exposure is kind of high so I can actually dial down the exposure here not that far Let's see here I'll try to dial this in in real time here so I'll dial it down a little bit so picture looks a little bit more succinct with the rest of them. Now again, because I'm constantly moving cameras around, I don't set all of the cameras to look the exact same picture wise, but if I was in a stationary environment and this is a permanent solution, I just go through all my cameras from all the different manufacturers and just dial this in so all the pictures look the same, the quality looks the same. In a super perfect world, I would actually just own all of the same brand of PTZ cameras. That way it's so much easier to balance all the colors out correctly. Let's go through some of these menu settings here. Let's go back into our admin console. Let's start in our video settings here. And we see that we have our max resolution is at 1920 by 1080. We currently have our frame rate set to 30 frames per second, which is typically what I use here. Now, if you're gonna be doing more fast motion, like action, 60 frames per second is what you'd wanna change in the frame rate section there. Uh, everything else is pretty default for what I'm looking for, how I'm gonna use this video format. Uh, 1080p, that looks default for what I would need. Let's go into audio settings. Now, I don't use the audio on my PTZ cameras. I just run audio through an audio interface. IP address and network settings, we've already gone through and changed and adjusted all of this. Um, and then maintenance, we can actually change the name of this to our HD Tenevo camera. Hit apply there and reboot it to save these changes. All right, after the reboot, we'll go ahead and log back in. And on the right hand side here, we can adjust our camera as well. So we have the options to zoom. So on the right hand side here, we have the options to move our camera around left and right. 
We can zoom in, we can zoom out. What are these? Framings, maybe? Uh, we can change our tilt speed, pan speed, all that default sensitivity of it. Let's go into image. Okay, we can change our image, brightness, contrast, saturation. So again, all those color aspects you'd wanna get right, you can change it there. You can change our exposure values here as well. And I need to do a video on exposures um, so that you guys can see the differences in exposure settings. White balance, we can change that too. It's set to auto white balance right now. Now, I was told this was a tracking camera. So let's figure out some tracking. So going through the web console, I don't see where I would set up the tracking or how that actually works. There's nothing that immediately jumps out at me or indicates to me that it's the tracking button or tracking icon in the camera. So let's take a look at the remote. Now on the remote, there's a big old AI button here, right smack dab in the remote. Now if I select AI on the remote, oh, it automatically turns on the cameras moving and everything. So AI will allow me to move around just by hitting that on the remote. So it's nice big on the remote, but I would really like it to also be on the web console. So if I hit AI again, then the camera stops moving. If I hit AI, turn it back on, camera's moving. Can it find me under the desk? I guess it can. I can't hide. I can't hide from it. So let's go on the other side of the room here. Oh, I think I tricked it. I think I tricked it. So let's turn AI off. Let's get it back up here. Turn AI back on. And auto framing. I think I tricked it again. Hiding behind stuff. All right, there it is. So it's trying to auto frame me at the same time. I am in a tight space. I am kind of giving it a challenge. But if I was just on a stage going from left to right, and it's doing its auto framing too. So let's see. So I, I tap this button here with the frame on just me. Okay. Now I really wish I could change it inside of the console. Let's turn on the auto tracking inside of here because I don't want to have to rely on the remote for, for doing it. So we have our camera actually set up on our network, connected to our infrastructure here with our other PTZ cameras. The HMI is actually connected to the ATEM Extreme, which is allowing me to record all the different camera angles here in the studio. So the next step is to actually use this camera and bring it into our live streaming production, which I'm gonna be using Ecamm and showing you some of the flexibility that you have when you're using an Ecamm software versus some of the other ones. So let's go ahead and open up Ecamm, which is our best Mac live streaming software ever. Now, because I have this plugged into my ATEM directly, I already have my Blackmagic selected as my video source. So on my switcher, I'll just go in and select camera three and now we are recording on camera three, essentially, um, which is our new PTZ camera here. So easily bringing it into our eCam, we can easily bring this into any of our slides. 
and add this camera as our main camera for any of our overlays that we currently have here. And then one of the things that I'm working on is really dialing in my Amazon Live Show. So I wanna load up a different profile. And so I have a countdown timer for my other profile here. And then I have another profile that we're building out for the church that we created using AI. So we'll add our camera into that and our different overlays. So we don't have NDI set up yet, but we will be doing that. So our different overlays with this camera. And for a 1080p camera, we're getting really good quality, get really good resolution. There's been a dozen PTZ cameras here on the channel, so there's nothing a whole bunch different that we can talk about. But I really do like the AI having the function on the button here. But let me see if I can program it into, well, that might be a different video because I want to set up the, well, we can try. We can try. Yeah, it'll be a different video because it might take a little while. I want to program one of my custom buttons on the op PTZ Superjoy as one of the buttons to start and, start and stop auto tracking because that's something that this can do. So another PTZ camera has arrived and it is in the studio. Very easy to set up as you can see, putting it on the network, being able to remote into the console, being able to bring it into Ecamm, which is our live streaming software for the Mac. And now we have another PTZ camera that allows us to use AI auto tracking and follow us around and be able to help us produce live streams that are better without us having to manually follow on the joystick, turn on AI and let it do all the heavy lifting in some of those circumstances where you need a little bit of assistance. So make sure you check out the next video and I look forward to seeing you there.